<laughs> hey guys, welcome back to the story of. We just had technical difficulties with our snapper. Is it a snapper? <laughs> um, so the couch is looking a little crowded today. You know what they say two's company, three is a crowd. And our crowd today is Bella. Woo! Welcome to the couch, Belle. You. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> reply. <laughs> no, uh, Bella and I met back in uni days um, at Collarts. Shout out the Collarts fam. Woo. And um, now she's stuck with me for life. <laughs> it's not as bad as you think, to be honest. Oh, that's so It's good. actually quite nice. Um, fun fact, though, we didn't actually study together at Collarts. No, we didn't. That's actually a really funny story. Yeah. I lingered like a leech. <laughs> you did. You did. You stuck around. So what years were you at Coll Arts? 2017 to end of 2018. And I was at Coll Arts from 2020 to 2023. So there's there's even like, it's not even the year after overlap. It's like a solid break. Yeah. Between. But you had a really cool situation where you got to come back as an alumni though. Yeah, so I got to play in different ensembles because I wanted to have the students experience what it's like to have a saxophone in the band. Because you are a saxophone player. Yeah, Bella on the sax. <laughs> <laughs> that just blew out so hard. <laughs> but I love it. Bella on the sax. So, um, yeah, so I experienced Bella... <laughs> you like an experience. I experienced Bella. What with, can I say? With that same kind of sentiment of she was in and around all the ensembles and and stuck around long enough to s- just hang out with the cool kids. Yeah. Because our cohort was pretty dang cool. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so on the podcast we do good versus bad. Mm. So have you thought of a good vibes and a bad vibes? I like have this actually. Week? Okay. With the five minutes that you told me? Yeah, sweet. All right, go. Uh, good vibes. Uh, actually, no, I'll start with the bad vibes. Okay, good idea. Um, there are no bad vibes for this week that I could have think- thought of um, because good vibes is all of this week. I've gotten to hang out with like two of my best friends. Uh, okay, I take that back. Um- <laughs> <laughs> I was doing muscle poses if you weren't watching. <laughs> Yeah, because no, it's me. Two, two of my best friends, like legitimately, two of my best friends that like I really do love. No, stop um, it. And we do get along. At first, we didn't. You're gassing us up too hard, Bell. I am. Yeah, <laughs> but I have. I do have to say, like, yeah, two of my best I friends. I think Jay's head's just grown two sizes. <laughs> it was already big Any enough. Comments, though. queries. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> If Jay's a, if Jay is a little bit quiet today, we do only have two mics, so Jay and I are sharing one. That is for now. Hopefully, soon we'll get some more. If anyone yeah. wants to sponsor us, Road, you want to sponsor us? Manny's Music, you want to sponsor us? Ooh. That's where we got these maybe, mics from. Maybe Collops can give you a sneaky grant. No, okay. They were hard enough to get when we were there. Yeah, true. But I was lucky enough to get a couple of the grants. To be fair. Yeah, well, that's, that's pretty great. cool. That's great. Yeah. So, good vibes is good vibes. hanging out with Just us. Just hanging out. Legends. How cool is that? My good vibes, same kind of thing. We've got to hang out with our friends for a couple of days. And it has been bad vibes. I have been sick. Yeah, true. And I have been tired. So, like, by, like, 9.30, I am ready to knock out. Because we're still working while the – Friends are up and Jay's brother and stuff, so they're having adventures during the day Ugh. and you'd think they would be tired enough from their adventures during the day, but then they also hang out at night with us. Yeah. And it's just so fun. It's, I love it. it. It's a lot of fun, actually. Yeah, so yeah. we've done a lot of fun things so far this week. We did escape rooms. We did a game night. We did an arcade night. So good. We did, went to Tencent Wings. Yeah. Oh, El Camino, shout out. <laughs> Delicious. Sponsor us. Yeah. 
true. That's a good one. And then we went and had a fancy dinner tonight, courtesy of Bella. Thank you so much. It was delicious. <laughs> I'm still dreaming of it as it's processing in my tummy. <laughs> yeah, you're good vibe versus bad vibe. I suppose I'll try and derail this podcast. No, no, no. I'm joking. This is mainly about you guys. But uh, yeah, probably that Bella and Willis came up. That was definitely the good vibe. Um, I have a cheeky good vibe. But I'm going to save it for the next podcast as well because I'm sure we'll do one with my brother. That'll be cool. I just don't want to derail the podcast. That's it. <laughs> um, and apart from that, no bad vibes. Yeah. Um, Straight good vibes. So I'll let you guys take yeah. away. Straight good vibes from Jay over there. All right. So, Bella, we're going to talk about what it's like being a saxophone player in, like, modern day life. Because you do some pretty weird gigs with your sax. Do I? Well, weird, weird gigs? For one, um, the last time you played in a club next to a DJ on the sax, when you play your gigs with your DJ. Oh, yeah, true. I have yeah. played with DJs, many DJs Which is Melbourne. so cool. Yeah. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. It's a different vibe, though, of gig. Yeah, true. Yeah. So Bella's Melbourne-based. Um, Shout out, Melbourne. If anyone, if anyone wants to hit her up. For a sax player, she's all right. Please do. Um, she's just all right. No, she is the goat of saxophones in Melbourne. She's played some pretty big gigs too. What's what's the biggest gig you reckon you've probably done? Biggest gig I've ever played? Yeah. Oh. Or like highest stakes. Were you like, was there a gig that you went, oh my God, I can't believe they chose me to play this? Yeah, actually. Uh, right next to Luna Park. It is called. Can you remember? Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> it was a festival. It it was no actually. Was it not no, a festival? No, it was not a festival. I uh, so I played next to Luna Park, at the. No, it's not the Forum because that's in the city. It's the Palais. The Palais Theatre. Right. I played at the Palais Theatre with a hundred other musicians on stage, for a Elvis Presley tribute show. That is so cool. And you were sax. And I was playing saxophone with 20 other saxophone players. Oh, dude, that would be cool to be with so many other saxophone players. I didn't know there was that many saxophone players in Melbourne. It was literally like a wall of sound. That's so cool. And you got to play some like iconic. Iconic Elvis Presley songs. So cool. Yeah. Those tickets sold out really, really quick for that too, I think. Oh, it sold out, yeah. Yeah. 100%. Oh, my God. That's so cool. Yeah. And then... So you do like – you're in a lot of bands though. Yeah. So like you do the DJ stuff very sporadically. It's that Sporadically, not very often. yeah. But like you're in – you can do a shout out of all the bands you're in if you can remember them. Okay, so there was There's some, a lot. <laughs> yeah, so I'll, I'll give you a shout out. Quick shout out to all the bands I have been in and am in. Uh, oh. So my first ever band was during Coll Arts, a guy who went to Coll Arts actually – uh, he was in trimester six when I was in tri one, and his lead guitarist came up to me and said, "Oh, you sax player? Do you want to start like join a band? I'm in this band," and I said, "Oh, yeah, like I've just started university. Can I get back to you because I want to see how I go with my first week?" Yeah, because I didn't know the workload, and so I was like, "Oh, okay." So a week later, I was like, "Yeah, fuck, like, like why not just." May you as know, well. May as do well. The, do the full experience. Do it, just do it. So I contacted this guy. His name's Dan Vogel. Um, Shout out. And he was the first ever band I was in and we released a single and everything through oh, Colorado. so cool. And I did heaps of gigs with him. I've probably done over 20 gigs with him. He's still doing his band now. Um, but, yeah, I left because he moved more into a, like an indie rock oh, cool. band. And you were booked and busy. Not at all. I yeah. was, <laughs> he was like my first band and then I had a bit of a break from gigs. And then since then, people heard about Bella on the saxophone. So there's been countless of different uh, gigs I've done, bands I've been in. And, yeah, so, yeah, shout out to Drago's After Party too. Hey. Uh, we released a single a couple of months ago now. Um, it's called Someone. I can't really give you any more information on what's to come. There is things to come. 
But yeah, we'll see what happens. Um, and also Square Dance Caller, if you guys are out there, you guys are about to go on a UK tour. That's so cool. Um, didn't get the invite apparently. Nah. <laughs> but oh well, maybe the next one. No chance. <laughs> take back the shout out for that one. Take, no, take I'm joke. I'm joking. We take it. We take it. Nah, not just at all. joking. These guys, it's all love. These guys are like, like, because uh, I know all these musicians from just doing gigs and stuff like that. So they've all hit me up at different points in time. Um, I want to shout out a venue, Baxter's Lot on Brunswick Street. Yeah, you do Baxter's a lot. Oh, phone call. Someone didn't put it on silent. Ooh. Careful, it's going to be copyrighted. Go away. <laughs> <laughs> All right. While Jay is um, off taking a personal call. Yeah. Baxter's, Baxter's Lot. Baxter's Lot was my stomping ground when I was at Cole Arts. Yeah. And nonstop different artists would play there. I would have my saxophone from rehearsal at Cole Arts, go to Baxter's Lot. That night, I would be playing a gig at Baxter's Lot. So cool. Baxter's Lot's such a good setup too. It is, yeah. I think it's just such a good vibe. Yeah, and they've changed where their stage is now, so it's a bit bigger. Nice. Yeah. I haven't been there in a while because obviously oh, it was not tiny, in Melbourne now. It was tiny. The stage was like this little tiny triangle and two people could fit. Now yeah. maybe four people can fit <gasps> on the stage. Great. Awesome. Yeah. So, yeah, so you, you do a lot of different genres as well, like – Every band I'm in is a different genre. That's so cool. That would be yeah. so fulfilling because it's not like you get stuck in one. Yeah. Well, I feel like I'd get bored pretty quick. Definitely. Yeah. So. And like most of the places they let you kind of run wild, right? Not run wild, but like you've got a lot of kind of freedom with your sax parts or. Yeah. So a lot of the bands, I either have a line that I make up and the lead singer ends up wanting me, like they want me to play that line, which nine times out of ten I've forgotten already because it's improvised <laughs> but most of the time it's is either improvising or playing a sax line that already exists i've probably played never tear us apart by in excess <laughs> over 50 times what a classic but you know you got to do what you got to do yeah because you've even played sax for for me for my recitals and stuff and you even jumped on the piano for one yeah, of those songs that whole piano gig uh, i took um, you out of your comfort zone there you, you really did and to anyone out there i'm saying right now to anyone out there that wants me to play the piano no <laughs> i'll only do it for ash ah uh, that's love <laughs> only because i don't think i can say no <laughs> no i think i think the reason why i really wanted you to play piano for that song was because we wrote it together yeah, we did. Like we wrote that together. You did made the piano up. And I made up. the piano up and I made the easiest piano part in the world because I knew I was going to play it. <laughs> yeah, because you knew I would rap you into playing it. And then we put, yeah, these beautiful lyrics behind it. And it was just such a little like labor of love that song was. Um, and it just popped into our head like right before yeah. recital time. Like it was, it was just great. And I reckon I really like, to this day, I really like the song. Oh, hundred percent. I think that's 100%. one of like out of the well, how many songs did I do in recital? Like seven. I think that's yeah. one of my favorites. Um, and I'd love to record it more professionally and yeah. kind of workshop it a little bit more. It's got good bones. It does have good bones. Just needs saxophone. Well, if you're playing the piano, then playing saxophone, and then we get Jay on guitar, we've got a full thing. Yeah, Bob's your uncle and Fanny's your aunt. Yep, that, yep. <laughs> oh, you funny. know that's actually the full saying yes, of that thing. Yeah. Just no one says Fanny's your aunt. Yeah, I wonder why. <laughs> be a bit disappointed. No, I'm joking. It'd be kind of funny if your aunt was called Fanny though. I'm sure there's people that have it. Yeah. What if, what if it wasn't just your aunt? What if it was your name? Well, it could be short for Francesca. I like the name Francesca, actually. Yeah, see, I've made it sound much better than it is. Oh, I, I would not nickname Francesca that, though. 100% no. Cool, yeah. Um, yeah, so what else do you do with your time? Like, tell me a little bit about yourself. Do you like long walks on the beach? No, I'm joking. <laughs> Here's an interesting <laughs> thing I just thought of. What's thinking up? of walking on the beach. Yeah. I was thinking about your corgi. Yeah. You have the most cute corgi ever. Yeah, some might say that. She's like a like a I call her a loaf of bread. 
Put some respect on Molly's name. Molly's great. <laughs> Molly, Molly, shout out to Molly. I miss you a lot, Molly. Um, she, she is, is a like loaf. the she's a loaf of bread. She literally looks like a loaf of bread, but she's like the most placid dog you'll ever meet in your life. Yeah, all for the scratches. As soon as you can yeah. give her pets, oh yeah, just she just loves cuddles. As soon as you cuddle her, she falls asleep and she'll just be on your lap the yeah. entire day. And she's not little. No, she's not. She's thirteen kilos. She's like a rock. She's 13.8 kilos. A very fluffy rock. Um, yeah, and she's nine years old. Her birthday is soon, actually. Ooh. September. Instagram. She does have an Instagram. <gasps> Oi! Hey, plug, plug, plug. Plug, plug. You can uh, follow her on Instagram. She does need some more followers, only because I don't really post on her Instagram all that often. But it's at Molly the Golden Corgi on sure Instagram. Is. My favorite thing about Molly is. That you'll be walking around Bella's house and she'll be walking in and then she'll walk right in front of you and just lay down, upside down, all feet in the air, waiting for pats right in front of you. And if you walk around her, she'll get up and then she'll walk around to the front of you again and then lay down again and just wait. And she'll just do that around the whole house until she won't give up. No, she don't. No, she doesn't give up. And the best thing is when my dad gets home. Oh, my God. Uh, so my dad gets home, gets through the door. Molly's like, she's sleeping. All of a sudden, ears prick up like this. And my dad just starts talking to her. She's like, he, the way he talks to her too is so funny. And every time he does talk to her, my mom's like, she doesn't talk like that. What are you, why are you doing that? And the way he talks to her is, so she talks to you. She goes, like that. He will say, bubble, 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 bubble. (laughs) And she'll be like, Oh my goodness. That is the best thing ever. <laughs> I think that's so cool. <laughs> I love it. People people go weird for their pets, dude. Yeah, they really do. Like people go weird for their pets, but it, it makes sense. And you know what they say is like that um have you heard the whole thing about like pets looking like their owners? Yep. You guys have the same hair color. I know. Some may say we're sisters. I think you guys are twins, not sisters. No, I'm joking. Woofed. (laughs) Woofed. You say (laughs) woofed. Woofed. It is a woofed moment. Jay, do you have any questions for Bella? Um. Well, uh, at first I was also going to say, do you think, like, is Molly one of the? This is mainly a question about Molly to you. (laughs) Yeah, that's you know how you know how like some dogs we say you know they oh my dog basically speaks English. You say walk or whatever, and she's like oh. Mm. that's like she knows what things are like how's molly on that scale is there something that you say like if you actually say you know molly i can't give you scratches now did she get like stabbed she actually does she does like yeah, she knows she does. what scratches her is ears is I mean, prick like. back and she'll look at you like or if you like like with scratches. a real like with a real puppy dog eyes like yeah. why aren't you why don't you want to pat me anymore type thing oh. but the best the best thing is when my mum or I, it's quite funny, but when my mum or I, <laughs> she's sitting on the couch, fast asleep sitting on the couch. Yeah. If I say, Molly, look, she'll, she'll kind of like, she'll be asleep and all of a sudden she'll go. And she's like, it's and totally she'll surprised. Look, she'll look like straight yeah. at you yeah. and you have to say, Molly, look, Molly, look. And she'll full on like, look at you. Like, Ooh. what is it? What is it? Or if I say, oh, dad's coming home, she'll start barking. She knows what's up. Or if her mum mm. meows, like, meow, she's like, woof, yeah. woof, oh, woof. Like and she looks out the window. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so funny, but we try not to do it a lot because we feel like if we do, we kind of rattle her up a bit yeah. and she starts barking, running around the house. Yeah. But the it's, best part so is funny. when ducks are in the pool, Molly goes right, right. spastic at these ducks in the pool. Like, she knows too. She'll yeah. be inside. All of a sudden, she'll start barking. We open the door. She runs to the pool. She's running around the pool. Great way to get her to exercise oh, too. Dude, yeah. Because the ducks don't even care about a dog <laughs> at the corner of the pool just running around because they know that she's not going to go into the water. Mm. So she's just running around the pool doing laps dude. the entire time, just barking at them. Yeah, Molly Bolt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just, before before I came marathon. here, there were eight ducks in the pool. The Molly Marathon. Eight, yeah. eight ducks. That's it. We have. I go now, wild for some ducks in the pool. We now have a pond. 
Our pool, Yo, is, our pool is a pond. <laughs> yeah. Molly's not happy about that. That's that's her territory by the sounds of it. Yeah, I think yeah, so. She's like, yep, that's it. Yeah. Dude, nice. Um, I was also going to say with the sax, and we mentioned about, you know, Never Tear Us Apart, playing that heaps of times. Mm. I think we've had some gigs. We've played songs where it's like, this song's been played way too much. But have you got a favorite song that you don't mind playing that much? I like, don't mind playing that much. Like, my favorite you're like, song. like, I could play this song 50 times and probably still not get sick of it. Oh, 100%. What's Disco up? Yes by Tom Minch. Yo, there you go. Do you Disco know that yes. song? Um, I know Tom Minch, but I don't, yeah, know, that song, I don't know that song in particular. That song, oh, so yeah. good. And any Sammy Ray song, I have love, like, I love, I, right. I could play all the time. Yeah. yeah. Funny, cool there story about Sammy Ray, actually. Yeah. Did you hear about this? So I don't know much about Sammy Ray. <laughs> you <gotta> be, <laughs> so Sammy, be so I know about Sammy Ray, but I probably haven't heard the story. Yeah, so so back when I was at Collarts, one of my friends got me onto Sammy Ray. This was like when she first started out, before she got really big, started touring everything. She was just at university in America. Um, with her friends, decided to make a band and everything. And so my friend's like, Oh, but I really want to play Sammy Ray. Um, for my exam, for my try, like her try to exam. I'm like, okay, cool. Um, so we looked online, no chords, no lyrics, nothing because she's like fresh. Like she's not a well-known yeah. artist. And so I was like, oh, what are we like, what are we going to do? Her songs are so hard to learn by ear because they're not like four chord songs. No, they're quite complex. Like super complex, super complex. And so it take you weeks to work it out by ear. And oh, you still probably get it wrong. Over weeks, like yeah. months, months and months and months to work out cuz they're full jazz based songs. Yeah. And so I was like I was stabbed in the dark. I was like, "Oh, maybe I'll message her on Facebook." And a lot of the time, like, you message your art, your favourite artist, they won't get back to you because they're way too busy or they just ignore it or don't see it. Yeah. So I was like, oh, may as well message her on Facebook. Didn't hear anything. And then I saw, I found an email, her email. And so I emailed her. A week later, I get an email back from her. And in my email, I sent the fact that I really want to learn Good Life by, by her, by Sammy Ray. And that I was in love with the song. We really wanted to play it for our exam for university. And she said, oh, like, I'd love to share the chords, the lyrics, everything with you. Wow. So she emailed me the chords, the lyrics, but original copies of the chords and the lyrics, like handwritten. That's so, like the scanned copies that you take photos of. Scanned copies of, like, her handwriting, everything. That Still is so on my laptop cool. till this day of Good Life. And she asked me, record your performance and send it to me once you do it. And I'll love to have a listen. Oh, that's so nice. And so I actually gave her the idea to, as part of her website, to um, do transcriptions of all her songs because people love, so smart. people love hearing her songs, wanting to learn her songs. So I, t- asked, I told her to make transcriptions and sell them on her website. So people can download them and play them themselves. But she's also getting an income on the side. Mm -hmm. And now she's touring America nearly every single year. Well, because like the thing, the thing that I find that one of the things I found the most struggle with at Call Arts and when you're studying music is finding accurate transcriptions. Yeah, because a lot lot are wrong online. 100%. And then you like, you'll play it and you'll listen to it and you go, that's not. 100% 100% right yeah, but no. you're, if, if you're still working on your craft and being able to like develop your ear for listening and hearing notes and everything like that half the time you won't be able to fix it yeah and then you need to ask then lecturers for help and it's just a whole ordeal whereas I feel like there needs to be a bigger like software kind of thing where artists can upload their transcriptions for purchase and stuff like that because it used to be music books back in the day yeah it used to be physical books yeah but now it's all online so of course they've got to get with the times of online life but um yeah i think a transcription a transcription service would be yeah amazing especially if there's nothing out there online that because learning by ear if it's a four chord song that's all good 
But if it's complicated songs, you're going to be there forever. Or if they've got like a weird half bar in the middle of the song and you're just oh, like, yeah. what? Or like if <laughs> Sammy Ray changes her rhythms a lot in her songs. Yeah, right. So she'll start off, say, Good Life. She'll start off with like a sumbery type rhythm. Yeah. And then in her bridge will be full different. Like it will sound like a different song. Oh, wow. Type thing. Yeah. And like the thing is when you're studying music, they want you to do those more complex songs and everything like that. Yeah. But it's just a challenge in and of itself to find the accurate transcription for it because obviously if you search up Taylor Swift song, millions are going to come up. Like all of her songs oh, will come yeah, up with a transcription. Yeah. But if you want the more complex like out of pocket because obviously the lecturers don't want to hear as much of the same songs unless you're switching it up and ch- doing a different rendition of it of these popular songs, um, they want you to do stuff that they haven't heard before or that you can put your own spin on or that's just mm. really interesting. Because they don't want you to really do like six pop songs in a row that sound exactly the same. You need to have that diversity in there. Yeah, well, didn't they at Call Arts, well, we had to pick different genre songs for our exams and have it like that versatility. Yeah, so you get marked on your diversity of your set. Um, yeah, so I would it wasn't do like more a, yeah. specific on genre when we when we went. I think it was more like you just need to have a good mix of like up tempo and slower songs, and then you know have a f- couple of different genres in there. But it wasn't set amount that you had to have or anything, which was good. Yeah, see, I did. I remember my try my try to exam. It was it was quite good. I had few people. I did two solo songs. By myself on stage because I wanted to show just saxophone, just me. Um, and one of the songs was this jazz song and it took me half a year to, or nearly half a year to learn. I did it at high school but then yeah. I had to relearn it again and it took forever for me to learn this song. But my sax teacher at the time, Phil, shout out to Phil. Oh, shout out Phil. He was my Phil, favorite. Phil Bywater. He's now moved away, sadly. I was so sad when he moved away. <laughs> yeah, so he was my sax teacher and he taught me so much about saxophone. Yeah. Um, and he told me about this song that I didn't that I did in high school and I said, Oh, that's like the perfect song to play solo on stage. Yeah, awesome. And then one of the guys I always used to listen to on YouTube, Derek Brown, his name is. He's mm-hmm. a beatbox saxophone player. That's such a cool combo. And so beatbox saxophone, you'd think he there was like a beat he would beatbox and then loop saxophone or play saxophone over the top. No. He beatboxes and plays saxophone at the same time. How is that even possible? On his saxophone. That's insane. Yeah. yeah, we'll have to look that up. Yeah, so he he beatboxes and plays sax at the same time, and I played a song, "Cello Suite" by Bach. Oh yeah, yeah it's yeah, yeah. the really well known "Cello Suite." I did that on saxophone, so it started normal, and then halfway through it, I started. It's there's a technique called slap tonguing on the saxophone, and mm-hmm. it sounds like a snare drum hit. If oh, you cool. were to hit a snare drum. So I did that and then you can kind of – it's slap tongue in and then there's another way to make it sound like you're playing a bass, like a kick drum. Oh, cool. So I did that as well as playing notes on saxophone. And so I did that piece and then I did – I got a band together with all my mates from Collarts and we played Hello by the Cat Empire. Banger. <laughs> yeah, so that was my first, like, my song that we played. That's so arts. cool. And now at any gig I play, my sound check song is the horn part from Can Empire. Hello. Fair enough. Actually, that's so cool. Yeah. Because when I did, I think my try to, it was just me and Jay on stage because it, we were in and out of lockdowns and things because it was 2020. So um, I was very lucky that I got to go on stage because there were some people that we did, uh, were in the same cohort as me that didn't get to go on stage uh, until like try five and there's only six tries in mm. the degree. Um, and like just because the timing just never worked out, but I was very lucky that I got to go on in try two, but because of the lockdowns, I couldn't get a band together. So I did my songs with just Jay playing guitar, which was really cool. It was actually really nice to share the stage with him and choose some songs. And that was at the point where I wasn't in the songwriting stream at that point because um when you do vote like voice at collarts you can choose 
just to focus on vocals and like technique and um, vocal health and all that kind of thing. Or you can do the songwriting stream and that's where you delve into, you know, songwriting and everything like that. And I moved into that side of things in try three. So you, it changes the way you do recitals and stuff, which is pretty crazy. Like yeah. you, you have to do a, over 50% of your songs that you do for your recital has to be original songs. Um, so yeah, I did some pretty cool songs. I did a song from in try two when I didn't have to do original songs. Um, I did a cool song from the Sapphires movie soundtrack, but it was like, it's an original song. I can't remember who the original artist is, but I did the Jessica Malvoy version of, um, what today. A man? No, did you, do, you didn't do what I man? didn't. I did today. I started loving you again. Oh, that's a great song. You were in the audience. I was in the audience, but it that. was, it was a couple of years ago now. Um, and then, yeah, I did a couple of different songs and they were great. Um, and that was a really good experience. And then, yeah, from there it was, I had to do 50% originals, which really pushed me because I went from not really writing songs to having to have write enough songs that I had three good ones by the end of the 12 week period. Yeah. So it's just constantly writing. And I do have to say, I did kind of burn out by the end of the songwriting and like my music performance degree with the songwriting aspect because I was writing a song every week Mm -hmm. and I just felt like I couldn't, I couldn't write when I felt inspired. I wrote because I had to. Mm -hmm. And I felt like that a lot. And I actually went through this phase because I did the double degree. Um, And I, my second degree was entertainment management, which is all theory based, which was great, great break. Um, And I don't think I sang properly for about six months after I finished my degree. Yeah, wow. And I don't think I actually like sat down and went, oh, I really want to write a song or had the like inspiration to be like, oh, I really want to write a song that's like this for almost a year, I think. Like it was Mm. a really long time. My, My musical creativity just needed a break because it had been pushed so hard. Well, it's like a boot camp. 100% 100% oh, this is a boot camp. And right. mine was like a two and a half year long boot camp. Mm. I was just going to ask this both a question. So mm. every musician's kind of got the piece that like pushes them the most or, you know, event that happens, whether it's like a gig or whatever. It pushes you the most, not, oh, not generally pushes you the most, but they've learned the most from. And I can think back to a few songs I like learned on guitar that just like blew the whole thing wide open. It was like, oh, that's how you do this, 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 and this, this, and this. You learn so many techniques or whatever whatever it might be, um, you know, for your dominant instrument, because I know, Bella, you play sax and then you said piano and I think you'll know like some guitar and stuff, yeah? No, I don't know guitar, but guitar? I do oh, sing a little. She does sing. sing a little? I she do sings. sing a little. Uh, yeah. That's a hidden thing that I keep secret. Yeah. All right, anyway, we're going to do a... I've very luckily been a Bella singer. And we're going to do a karaoke thing after this at the end of the episode. <laughs> she doesn't know about that part that we do every episode. Just tell her that because she didn't watch the podcast. Watch the podcast. No. Um, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, yeah. So was there a thing in your chosen like dominant instrument, you know, your vocals, vox, um, that blew it, like blew the whole thing wide open for you? Learned like the most techniques, whether it's an event, or, like a gig or just a song you learned, like a piece. Yeah, so when I was – so I did – after Coll Arts, I actually had about a year break because uh, of COVID and everything. Yeah. And then I really wanted to do my master's at Melbourne Uni. So – Yeah, you you told me a little bit how challenging that. Yeah, so my first year doing my master's was all online. And it's like the world's hardest thing to do a master's online of teaching, especially doing placement. So I had to do Mm. placement online on Zoom at a school, but I wasn't at the school. I was just in my bedroom teaching kids how to play saxophone. And it's quite hard because especially with Zoom, the volume, when you play something loud, it just peaks straight away. We were trying to do oral exams and listening exams on Zoom. Yeah, so it was so bad, hey. Like Yeah, so all these kids sounded really, really, really bad. Like these kids weren't bad at all. Mm. Like at saxophone. Because as soon as we were allowed back in on campus, they were sounding amazing. Whereas just on Zoom, because it peaks straight away, the sounds all compressed. It wasn't built for that. 
it's not built for that at all. And they didn't have the right equipment either at home. It was just on their iPads and their yep. like their headphones, the Apple headphones with the little microphone thing. Yeah. So they were playing saxophone into this little tiny microphone and it was just peaking the whole time. And I felt so bad for them for them because they just wanted to learn how to play saxophone. But they didn't have the right they weren't in the right environment to yep. play saxophone. Um and luckily the second year at, for my masters it was all in person great so we got to do more i got to do some more teaching and everything but the one song that challenged me the most and i don't know i kind of wanted to learn this song so my teacher gave me a song for my exam and i said to him i wanted to learn a difficult song because i feel like i want to challenge myself and to become a better saxophone player but i didn't realize how challenging he was going <laughs> to give me until he gave me this piece and this piece no joke bpm wise how fast it was 215 bpm oh my goodness okay. so yeah so that this is like- so this this song was meant so this recording of the song i'm trying to think of it while i'm talking about it uh the lead the main melody of the song is on a lead like electric guitar and right. so electric guitar compared to a saxophone, of course they can play a bit faster because it's with their fingers, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. With saxophone, I had to make the same articulation as the guitar was doing at that speed playing the same notes at the same time as this guitar. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> That's insane. So it took me – so we – with Melbourne Uni because it's semesters compared to trimesters, yeah. the exam was – middle of the year and then at the end of the year so my actual like main exam for my saxophone was end of the year so i had the whole year to learn this piece oh that's great yeah i needed more than one year to learn this piece yeah right so i was putting every single day i was practicing for two hours straight yeah on this piece mostly on this piece because all the other pieces i chose myself and they were all easier than this one piece Mm. And oh, the piece is called Secret Champ, by the way. I just remembered it. Thanks. I'm still t- trying to think of the name of the song that is in my head. I know the band, I don't know the song. <laughs> you'll yeah, it's you'll called, both know. It's it. called Secret Champ. Um, so look it up. I don't know who the artist is, unfortunately. But it it will come up straight away. But it's so fast. It's quite cool though. It's very much sambery uh very jumpy so the leaps yeah, right. there was a lot of leaps in it and so i'll go from one octave to another octave very quickly and just go up and down the whole time so it kind of sounded like saxophone yodeling at one point <laughs> oh my goodness yeah and very fast too and but the good thing is the a section was fast but the b section was really slow oh cool but worst thing i had to record it at home so it wasn't an in person recording because of Bummer. the lockdowns so i was recording it at home and you know how hard it is to record a a piece that's that fast at home without making a mistake i did over 100 takes in i think that's one the, day yeah that is one of the things that i would say is when you have to record something and you have the power to stop and restart Oh my god! You, do become, you become a, a perfectionist. perfectionist. <laughs> One hundred percent. I because we're under a roof. We are under <laughs> a roof. Um, I had the exact same problem where I would spend four days mm. of just trying to record recital songs and things like that. And the thing was, with the recital, it was like thirty minutes or twenty minutes of continuous, like you know, you you're not meant to stop the recording. It's meant to just be, you know, your four or five songs one after the, another. And if you got all the way to that last song mm. and stuffed up so bad that you went, oh, and then you have to stop. You have to restart all four songs again. Yeah. So it's like it's it's at what point you have to make the decision of at what point what do you let go. And what is big enough for you to actually stop and restart? Yeah, so this song, not only was it fast, it was four and a half minutes long. My goodness. So I remember it was the very end of the day. I'd had multiple breaks in the day because you start getting very frustrated with yourself once you make mistakes. As soon as you do that, you got to stop. 
Because otherwise, if you don't stop and you just keep going, you make more and more mistakes. Yeah. So you just take little breaks, whether that be like, I don't know, go for a walk or have some food or some water or whatever. Yeah. Uh, I got back back to it, end of the day, just before dinner. I could smell dinner was ready. Shout out, mom, you make the best food. <laughs> uh, yeah, so before dinner was ready, I did the last take, got up to the – because the sections repeat. So you, it, so you do the A section, you go to the B section, then there's the A section again, and then it's solos. So in the solo section, I just did one big solo. Mm. And then you go back into the A section – but you do that twice and then it jumps to the very end of the song. The second last bar, I kid you not, I played two wrong notes. <gasps> Out of the whole thing, I did the whole thing perfect, get to the second last bar of the piece and I played two notes. I would have thrown it. <laughs> it wasn't I – w- I wish I did. <laughs> yeah. So I, I – at this point, these two notes sounded so bad in the key of the song, like tritone bad. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So if you don't know what a tritone is, it's it's called the devil's notes. They yeah. just don't sound great at all together. No, it sounds so unnatural. It does. It's the Simpsons. If you don't know what it is, but mm, yeah, 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 yeah. It yeah. is the start of the. It's the, the Simpsons. start of the Simpsons. We don't want to summon the devil. Yeah. <laughs> is that where you were going with that? Right. Yeah. So basically, these two notes. Made the piece sound really bad at the very end of the song. Yeah, but I was like, at this at that point in time, I just wanted to edit it, submit it, send it off. Yeah, like full be done with it. Be done with it. Do not have to see the piece ever again. So I said to myself, let's just do it. So I just sent it off. Uh, a month later, <laughs> my teacher emails me, and he said. I really love those last two notes of the piece. <laughs> and I said to him, hey, did you listen to the whole thing? He's like, oh, yeah, it was perfect until those last two notes of the piece. Yeah. And I said, oh, well, I would have done it again, but it was 8 o'clock at night and I was very tired and I thought the last two notes added character. <laughs> That's a good way to do it. And he said, oh, it added character. It was very jazzy. But, like... It would be better if they were the right notes. And I said, oh, well, do I get any points deducted? And he said, oh, well, no, because you did finish the piece. I thought it was really good. And I said, well, there's your answer, isn't it? Mm. And, he, and he, <laughs> he, he's like, oh, well, congratulations. Next time you play it for your next exam. And I'm like, what do you mean next exam? He said, oh, well, you have to, the piece I gave you, you have to do for your next exam as well. I said, oh, why is that? And he said, oh, because, like, the level you have to get to is that level. So I said to him, oh, why can't I just do another piece? And he said, oh, because I've already written it down that you have to do it for your next exam. Oh, my God. Teacher, and don't do that. So six months later, PTSD comes in. Did you, did you get to do it? Did you get to do that one live, though? So I got, to do it, I got to do it live with the band and it was just even more confusing. <laughs> Yeah, it's like it's there's there's two ways that it can go when you add a band. It can either make it so much easier or so much harder. Well, it was harder because I had the lead like electric guitar player playing the same line as me, and if I was ever so slightly out tempo wise, it would be like a little echo effect happening. Yeah, that makes it hard. Yeah. Um, I think mine. You go, hopefully you guys can tell me what the name of the song is because I can't remember. It was in my final recital and I found this song like way after I'd chosen all my other ones. It's um, by a band called Couch. What is the song name? Oh, yeah. Couch. I freaking what's the I song love name Couch. Though? Yeah, but yeah. what's the song name that I did? Couch. Song name is I Easy to it. Love. Thank you. So it's called Easy to Love by Couch. And I, when I tell you it was fate that brought this song to me because I was in my car driving home from uni one day and one of the rehearsals we'd just done went so terrible. Like I – because when we were doing my final recital, I was very sick. I had a list of problems and I was genuinely needed to be bedridden but 
forcing my way through it for about mm. three months straight to the point where I didn't actually know whether I'd be able to com- complete my final exam and I got special considerations because I was so ill. Like it was intense ill. <laughs> like I was not a functioning human outside of trying to just finish my degree. Yeah. Um, and I was driving home and I just had my playlist. I'd had my playlist on all day while studying mm. and all the two-hour drive down to uni. So mm-hmm. you know when you play playlist and it goes through all your playlist and then it just recommends songs? Yeah. It got through that and that song came on. But in my playlist there was no songs that were like it. Yeah. Like it was a completely different vibe. And the, from the first time hearing it, I went, I can sing that. I can sing that good too. Like I was yeah. like in my head, I'm like, I know that my voice, it would suit so well and everything like that. And then I'm listening to some of the like runs and licks and notes that they're hitting and I'm like, oh, I got to actually look into that. I got to like, oh yeah, I so, got to try. So I got onto Couch because when I was listening to Sammy Ray, it came up as a f- similar artist. I think that's maybe what it was. You told me to listen to a Sammy Ray song. I'd listened to it like the week before, but then I had my playlist that had not any Sammy Ray or anything in it. Yeah. But it just came up because I'd listened to Sammy Ray the week before. But yeah, it um was a very challenging song, but it was so fulfilling yeah. when you actually hit those notes. And I was very, very, very happy to play and sing that in my final recital. And I still love hearing that song and singing to that song in the car and things like that. And I think if I was to gig or anything, that would be one of the songs that I would like cover in. I even got to play sax. sax in that song. Yeah, you were in the no sax. No piano, saxophone only. Sax, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and I, and I think that final recital where I got to, my band was uh, in just all my friends and it was just so, such a loving environment, especially because everyone was so understanding with me being so sick. Yeah. Like I had no voice a week and a half before the exam. Mm. I had nothing. There was that nothing would come out. It's like two days before my exam, I literally cried to one of my lecturers because I was so ill and I had no voice and it was mm. like terrible. I couldn't half the notes just wouldn't come out. Yeah. I, I remember you Yeah, me like this. you can remember yeah. like half the notes I would sing and it just wouldn't come out and I would do rehearsals with my full band. And I wouldn't be able to sing. Yeah. So I just we'll had just, we were just playing the songs instrumentally. Yeah. Yeah. And even and even the day of the morning of, we're in the rehearsal room beforehand and we're changing what songs I'm going to do. None of the band songs, just the songs that I was going to do by myself. Yeah. Because I could not sing them on the day. Yeah. So these songs that I'd rehearsed for months and months and months and put my stakes in to make the perfectly curated rest, like recital set, mm. I had to switch up day off. And I am a oh, planner. I remember you played that song with Luke. Yeah. On guitar. Yep. Yeah. So I am a planner, 110%. Well, you got to have will, those backup songs too. Yes. Just and in case I was, something happens. I was very lucky that I had Luke who was so proficient on guitar yeah. that we had actually performed a song together previously that sits in such a – an easy part of my range yeah. but is still show-offy enough for the recital. Yeah. Like it just worked so well and I literally, I was like trying to sing this song in front of everyone in the rehearsal room because I'm like if I'm going to do it in front of a whole crowd of people plus our lecturers, I may as well do it in front of my friends in the band room. Yeah. And I and it, it just wouldn't happen. The notes just wouldn't come out. And no. I was like what am I going to do? was very bad but um we pushed through i still got a great score for considering the circumstances um there is recordings of those performances that i don't think i will ever watch again for some of the songs because they just were not great at all and i i actually listen to those songs and i'm just reminded of how sick i am like i think they have bad connotations towards them now some of them but I every time if I'm scrolling through and I see the song that I did with Luke, which was Flame Trees by Cold Chisel, an absolute banger. Yeah, it's a great song. Um, that has been one of my go-to songs for years. It is now my go-to karaoke song. Hey. Um, 
every time I will listen to that and I am so proud of that and I'm so proud of me and Luke. We did that with t- – we ran it through twice in the rehearsal yeah. room and then went straight over and did it on stage. Um, and then the song that Bella and I did, um, the original we, song. I we did two songs. Called. You bet we did. You're forgetting one. My the one that I'm talking about is the one where I we wrote the um, original where that I was, last minute one. Yeah, where I was pretty much saying goodbye to Coll Arts in a way of um it's called Days Like This and it was yeah. and it was a beautiful song. Yeah. Um But then there was one more song. I think it was a cover. I don't remember what it was though. Oh. That's interesting. I'll have to think about that. Yeah. So I know I played a song and sang it by myself on the piano. Mm. And then I know there was about three or four band songs. Yeah. And which then was, was really one fun. one more song with me too. Yeah, right. And I was more active on the piano with that one. Fun. Yeah, I know. Oh, I'll have to look Instead back into that. Instead of three chords, I played four chords. <gasps> That's right. I yeah, I, yep. that four chord song. Yeah. You were, yeah, I remember we were sitting in the rehearsal room and you were like, guess what? Got to break out the fourth chord. And it was just such a thing. I do have a question for Jay, though. What is your go-to karaoke song? Oh, no. Jay and karaoke. I know why she's asked this. Because you you played it the other day. I did play it the other day. Fergalicious is definitely on the the cards there. I think think the last time it was sung at karaoke, I was... I'd had too many sideies. Too many 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 sideies in my system. I was past <laughs> my Fergalicious peak. Yeah, yeah but the yeah. Fergalicious window ha- was past. It, correct. I was now into probably like peak Gangnam style or something. Put him to bed style. Yeah. I was now on like... Put him to bed style. I was now like I'm past the Fergalicious and more into like a can't help falling in love, like somber, depressing <laughs> song, like, you know. But no, Fergalicious, 100%. Nice. Um, would we like to sing that? Now, together? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, let's definitely. do that. We all agree. <laughs> oh, copyright. Okay. True. I'll just do it. I'll just do a hard cut right here and pretend that we sat. No, I'm joking. Um, yeah, I was going to add my own answer to that question Go as well. Ooh, yeah, I was going to say, because um, I've kind of taken a different part. We haven't, we haven't done a music podcast, so this is like super hype for us. Because we've really wanted to do a music podcast, but we're just waiting for our fantastic Bella to oh. not like not like just a music podcast as like music as the story of. Um, we've done bikes and we've done books and we've done stuff. We just haven't actually gotten to music yet, and we've really wanted to. And yeah. it just was a perfect introduction with Bella for music. Because music's been such like a big part of our lives, and we've mm-hmm. talked about all of our other hobbies. And it's like, oh, music. We haven't well, even we talked about it, but yeah. Original. Yeah, correct. Anyway, I was going to say, for me, I've taken a different path. Mine's correct. All... <laughs> correct. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, skipping that. That was correct. <laughs> anyway, um, I was going to, uh, just because I'm like super hyped and I'm getting this out. Um, I've taken a different path to you guys and I had like an event. This is why I changed it. I was going to originally ask if there was mm. a piece that's pushed your technique, like just mm. your skill levels super high. Your one was crazy, Secret Champ. That was really cool. And what was yours? Easy to Love, which is an awesome song. Um, I have I feel like I had an event and it was like three days of I found this new band. And I'm like, oh, I really want to learn their songs. Mm. Much like Sammy Ryan. They didn't Sammy, Sammy Ray. <laughs> Close I enough. Don't know why I'm saying Sammy Ryan then. Probably a Sammy sister. Ray. I was like, oh no, they haven't got any tabs, no transcriptions, no whatever. I suppose that was the thing. I can't read the notes. So tabs, it is. It does the job. Um, they didn't have any tabs. Yeah, mm. I didn't go for the tr- traditional route. Could barely even read. Ta- could barely read. And I was just <laughs> like, all right, I'll see if these guys have those. They didn't have those tabs or whatever. And I was so obsessed with this band. Um, they were called, or oh, I don't know if they're still together or not, but Dorje is the band, like a UK kind of, Post grunge, like a bougie uh, door. Yeah, Dorje. Dorje. Hey. Say I'm fancy. Yeah, Just basically say my name backwards in a way. Last name, first name, Dorje, almost. <laughs> anyway, um, 
Yeah, and they didn't have that. So I was like, I've got to learn these songs. There was three songs, Two Week, Aromancy, and Catalyst. They just brought out the third one, Catalyst. And they were my favorite three songs. And so three days I spent a day learning each one note by note, like just finding it on the guitar. Oh, wow. Then I worked out. I was playing the whole song wrong. They play in drop C sharp, so basically like a half step down from standard tuning with the lowest string down one step. And so I realized I'd learnt the whole song wrong mm. on the third day. And I was like, well, I'll down tune the guitar and start again. Down tuned it. And then instantly like my brain clicked and I was like, oh, just move your fingers up one. Duh. And I was like, oh, sick. Playing it sounded awesome. And then from then on, I think the whole like board, whatever you whatever you call that part of the guitar, the fretboard, yeah, the fretboard. Oh yeah, the board. You're right. Um, just clicked, and I think that's when I started to learn stuff by ear. And I was like, oh, now I pl- listen to, oh, well, now I know chords and things. Read a chord chart and play it. And it's like, oh, that part sounds wrong. I'll just move my fingers around to different spots, and then you will find the one that's like, oh, that's kind of it well that's this bass note or whatever let's add a chord on top of that and then i don't know what i'm playing but it's actually what they're playing in the song and it's so much better i think that's what the way i've learned many like lizzie McAlpine songs now <laughs> just the, the video <laughs> the video watchers we're gonna find that part funny we're sharing a microphone so <laughs> he just kept taking the microphone away from me when i go to speak yeah, but that's my event i guess but yeah that's actually a really good way to learn how in music like new music I mean, it's, it's very inefficient like note by note it is but all the notes you can play if you keep doing that you'll it will become a skill for you and you'll you'll get quicker and quicker at it each time yeah and i feel like i have and now it's like some songs i'll hear on like just mainly like pop songs where it's you know four chords or whatever yeah but instantly you hear that chord and you're like oh it's this chord but then you hear the next ones and then i'm like oh they're definitely going to use like a capo and they're actually playing like they're playing these chords because you're not going to play like C sharp and then whatever. It's just easier to have capo one, C sharp. Well, then just play a C. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. You want to, yeah. you want to know Brain's a fu- out weird. funny story that happened in high school with it's music really quickly before you say that. Yeah. We'll say um, that. You can also tune by ear now too, yeah. like your guitar and stuff. So you learn. You you now have a really big asset of with your – you've trained your ear so well with guitar and it's also kind of universal because you can then go and use a bass or use a piano and everything by ear and it's just like as soon as you've got that basic understanding of the instrument, you can pretty much work out the rest from where you're at. Yeah, I, feel like, um, I feel like piano is really easy now. I think like we had a keyboard – yeah, and there was a couple of days I spent playing the keyboard and it's just like, oh, well, it's just a guitar on its side, isn't it? Mm. But talking about sax, like there's no way I could play a sax because even talking about it before, I mean, I'm mm. sure I could learn it and go through the motions, but you were, you were mentioning like in the car, this is in the car ride, by the way, not in the podcast, you were mentioning like there's ways you got to move like yeah, the throat so, and all the different notes or whatever. Yeah. So you've got the range of the saxophone. Well, tenor sax is B flat to high F sharp. And you can actually get above a high f sharp but you have to have a combination of notes that aren't actually a note if you were to properly just play them like you would any other note it would sound terrible Mm. but you have to shape your throat in a way they're called altissimo notes so you have to shape your throat in a way that and you have to pitch it in your head of this note of what it's meant to sound like and it's like the world's most hardest thing i still can't do it to this day and i've been playing saxophone for 17 years it was very much like a, a super sensei skill. It's like very much you got to learn the techniques to be able to do it. It's also like how people can do whistle notes in vocals. Like yeah. Ariana Grande and Mariah Carey, like the whistle notes. It's like as soon as you got the technique unlocked. Yeah, you can do you've it. You've got it. But yeah. getting that technique and making it healthy, yeah. whole different story. Oh, yeah. 100%. Yeah. Uh, somebody actually the other day, uh, a couple – not the other day, a couple of months ago, asked me, <laughs> asked me, oh, how do you know what notes you're playing if you can't see what you're playing? 
<laughs> which, which to be honest, like fair, fair, fair yeah. enough. Yeah. Like I can't actually see. Like I'm not looking. I can't even see because it's, it's all in the feel. way. It's all feel. And when I first started saxophone, it was like I was looking, like turning to the side to look at or what in the notes. mirror, or in yeah, in the mirror. But mirror confused my brain. Yeah, because everything's opposite. But um. I was, yeah, kind of like looking, feeling and everything. And I tell people now it's all feel and muscle memory. Yeah. Because the notes don't change. Like the fingering of the notes don't change at all. And there's set fingerings for each note. But as soon as you're able to, it's all muscle memory. Like scales helped heaps. Yeah, 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 100%. Learning scales and knowing the notes and being able to press a little tiny button with your thumb to go up an octave instead of having to learn a whole new set of notes is mm. cheating. I know it's I know it's cheating, but like with trumpet, you've only got three buttons that you press. Yeah. But those three buttons are all these combinations of notes because they've got the harmonics, right? So the harmonic series of each note. But so you can play like a C which is open on trumpet. Oh yeah, so I played trumpet as well. Um so open. Just a fun fact there. I also play trumpet. Oh, I've played heaps of instruments. It's so cool. So primary school, quick rundown. Primary school prep started piano. Year one, I was still playing piano. So prep to year six, I was playing piano. I learned how to do basic chords, still know how to do all that stuff. And then year two, we had to learn a stringed instrument. So I learned violin. And from then, I played saxophone year three as well as trumpet. So I was doing trumpet and saxophone from year three onwards. And then year six, I stopped the trumpet. Year seven, I started the cello. So yeah, I was cool. doing saxophone, cello, and I also did singing in year seven. So then after that, year eight, I did the French horn, the cello, the saxophone, and singing. But the thing is... I was only allowed to play two instruments because my academic grades were going down. Yeah, that checks out. Look but, at the th- but the thing is, like, if you knew that you were going to be doing music, would you not continue to do music throughout high school, you yeah. know? Quick question. Yeah. Did you ever see the – did you ever have the Monsters, Inc. movie, like, DVD? I Monsters did, Inc. yeah, yeah. Do you remember there was, like, the short movies in it? And did you see the one about the one man band? Yeah. Yeah. You. That just reminded me of you. <laughs> just me. all the like trumpet, the French horn, the cello, all yeah, strapped so to you. Just, like, do, 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 do. Yeah, <laughs> but so, anyway. So still, French horn didn't close. last long at all because I don't think my mum loved me playing a loud instrument in the house. And fun fact too, my mum actually hated the saxophone to begin with when I was playing it because I sounded terrible. I've still got recordings on my phone of my first ever recording on sax. And I was back, it was back year three, me playing tennis saxophone, and it sounds like a dying duck. Oh my goodness. And so now, like from year three till about year six, my bedroom door, she would shut it. Like, full shut the door, let me practice with my door shut. Now, if I have my door shut, she actually walks past and opens it. So it's kind of good in a way that she thinks I've improved since then. You would hope so. Yeah. From you grade would, three. You would hope so, yes. Yeah. That's so cool. Well, I think that's that's the pod. We could talk for hours and hours and hours and hours we could, yeah. about music. <laughs> like I think I think we could talk forever and this will not be the last music episode. There will be plenty more to come because it is such a big passion of Jay and I's and such a central aspect of our lives. So, yeah, Bella will probably be on next week, um, their episode next week, hopefully, maybe even with another guest of Willis, Jay's brother, um, depending on how we go. But, yeah, so thanks for coming on. Yeah, no worries. Happy to be here. Yeah, and we will talk to you on the next one. Yeah. Sweet. Any closing? Shout-outs, comments? Queries, concerns? Queries, concerns. Queens. Nothing? Uh, you know, actually, 
I no, cause the last last second thing before we close up the podcast. Uh embarrassing story actually. Quick oh, quick yeah. one. A quick yeah. bar- embarrassing story. Yeah. Me, year seven, me, starting a new school. Uh really, really love still loves the song but kind of gives me PTSD, but I still sing it anyway. It's my karaoke song, She Will Be Loved by Maroon Five. Oh, I think everyone at about that age had a She Will Be Loved moment. Yeah, so She There's Will still, Be Loved. I don't even want to say it out loud, but there is still a version of me singing She Will Be Loved on YouTube. Yeah, so She Will Be Loved by Maroon 5. Uh, so we had this music on the green thing at lunchtime and it was like a talent show mm-hmm. for music. And I brought my docking station that I got from this op shop uh, that I volunteered at and I plugged, I plugged it in. It had like my iPhone 4 in it uh, with like the adapter and everything. And I plugged it, I plugged it in. Uh, it's all ready to go. I turn it all the way full because like. It's got nothing going for it. It's literally like about to cack, cack it or whatever. And so I'm full there, got the microphone ready. It's like a full stage. They set up this blooming stage with like a drum kit, everything. And I'm on this on this stage, so ready. I press play, start singing, but it's not a karaoke version of "She Will Be Loved." It's uh, and just the normal version of "She Will Be oh Loved." Oh my goodness! So I'm just singing along with him, and uh, <laughs> get so good. I uh, don't know what happened to the docking station, but it just stops just before the chorus. And so I was full getting into the song. And then I was about to go and I was like, she, and then it just stopped. Oh, no. And so I was like, what, what, like, what do I do? All these people are looking at me on stage. And so I'm on one side of the stage, docking stations on the other. I walk over and I kick it and it starts up again. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm full like singing. Everyone's <laughs> laughing. They think it's like a comedy show. I think it's a bit. Yeah. <laughs> they think it's like a full bit that I planned it. And I get to the chorus and I didn't even plan. I was just full in the moment, loving my life, singing along with my favourite song. Soon, Just before it gets to the chorus, I jump off the stage and I start singing everything. And I bring it like around the, like how they give you high fives and stuff. Oh my I do goodness. like the whole high five thing. And then the docking station stops again. And so I walk, I go back on stage and I was like, oh, sorry, everyone. I've got a faulty docking station. Just one second. I kick it again. Starts up again. Everyone's laughing <laughs> at oh this God, point. Oh, my God. That's the best. And so the song finishes and everything. Strong finish. Everyone's clapping. And what I do in the microphone is I said, oh, thanks for listening to my TED Talk. I hope you love my comedy act. <laughs> Yes. So clever. That's such a good way to end it. Oh my god. That's the most 2009 shit I've ever heard. <laughs> so but the funny thing is, so I've still got the docking station at home, and it works like wonders. Kickstart it like a motorbike. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! What a good note to end it on. Yeah. All right. We will talk to you next week. Bye. See ya.